welcome to episode nine of nine the JT wow. Music Podcast, or episode uh, Nerf. Nuth. Nuth. Episode Nuth um, of the JT Music Podcast. We're catching up to you, Joe Rogan. Here we come. One, I, how many does he make a week? Uh, probably like two or three. Okay. That's Maybe a, even that's more a, than I that. Think that's, that's when a, he was on. That's a pretty good rate. Like, yeah. if we make one a week... <laughs> And he makes three a week. I think we'll catch up eventually. With, maybe within a couple months. Um, yeah, exactly. But yeah, welcome back. Thank you all for listening, uh, especially the people that we know, like our friends and relatives. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, what what do we got to talk about today? What's been going on in our lives? Uh, in our neck of the woods, uh, it's been been hectic in a good way. I think I we had teased or touched on that earlier, but uh, recently, recently. So again, these are recorded ad- ahead, but we recently, as of this world that we are on this side of the camera, mm-hmm. had uh, Fable visit us. Yes. Um, just he came, he wanted to visit, came with his wife, and we showed him around Raleigh, North Carolina, and mm-hmm. had some fun. Just kind of, I don't know. It was they so had, much fun. Yeah, there. It's it's always interesting when there's uh, when people come to East Coast, I guess, for the first time or one of the first times, mm-hmm. and it's different to them because it's just like we've been here our whole lives. And even you've been upstate New York. We've both been in Southern Maine, and then we've both been in North Carolina. It's like there's differences, but it's like that—that that was our world, though. Like yeah. that coast is like the same biome, the same kind of people, more or less, the same industry and businesses and food and stuff. You know, it—it's interesting. It's very eye-opening when people, yeah, from completely different biomes of our country, yeah. just the the way that houses are organized. It was very interesting to see Nick and his wife talk about how much different it is over here. Yeah. Um, but they really enjoyed it. We had a great time. We love showing off our stomping grounds over here. Uh, we love it in oh, North yeah. Carolina. Um, so yeah, it was a ton of fun. And as we've talked about before, I'm sure, like when we hang out with our peers, our other nerdcore people, it's just like it's family. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, I think there was a quote from Rustage said at MPC 2022, yeah. you know, in your day to day life, you're with people who don't get it. And these people, they just get it. Yeah. And uh, I thought that was a great cro- quote. Shout out to Rustage. But it's yeah, a, it's a great quote, Rustage. Great quote. Uh, yeah. <laughs> great quote, Rusty. Um, yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. Uh, yeah. We we were playing with the idea of recording a podcast with Nick, but we were just having such a good kind of unplugged time. You know, there's a lot of maybe pressure to take advantage of being together for content or for the brand. Mm. And we got a picture um, with him and he posted it, but it was, it was just, that was truly, I think it. No. Yeah. And, there was and one that, point. Like, we were just like, it's just, we had an awesome conversation. Like, dang, that would have been good for a podcast. So I, it's like, whatever, you know, but it worked. I I'm happy. It worked out that way. Like, obviously we're not going to go into details. We, we talked about like a lot of important things like content creation, mental health, stuff like that. Uh, personal things that obviously we won't go into detail here because Nick's not here, but there was one point where we were showing them the office and we just had this awesome conversation. I was thinking, oh, this this would have been a great podcast. Yeah. But then I was like, you know what? That's It's even better. It, I feel like we got to get more genuine. Plus, we don't see Nick that often. Yeah. So it was really nice to just like talk shop and also just hang out, shoot the shit, yeah. have some good laughs. Um, it felt yeah. like the, the business-minded opportunistic side of me kind of was like, no, no, we're not gonna, I'm not gonna put any pressure on that on anyone, on myself. Yeah. Like, let's just hang out. And that was, it was liberating and fun. Mm-hmm. And something not too common, I guess, among like these interactions we have with fa- like friends and stuff. Yeah. I do say that though, but we had Rocket Gaming visit um, once and we were like, oh, it's collab. And we didn't, we didn't collab. We just partied the whole time. And yeah. then the same thing we had. That was back cake. when I was still drinking yeah. and Russell goes ham. So that was, we did do a little work though. Just a little we bit did, to start We did off. a little bit on the, on the Fortnite rap. So there was some productivity. Yeah. And then um, Bone Cage visited. And we didn't do anything productive we, either. We played, <laughs> we, just, we also drank and played. Uh, just video games in the office. What we, was it? We played the Russian game. Escape oh, from Tarkov. Yeah. We played so much Tarkov. Yeah. Oh man. Um, and that, and then, then had Fable and Divide had visited for a music video, mm. which obviously was a lot of business, no play. Yeah, but yeah, um, I don't know. It was cool. It was a lot of fun. A lot of and, fun. Uh, yeah. So everyone, anyone who saw those, uh, that picture he posted, it was like, oh, what are you guys working on? Nothing, nothing at all, <laughs> which is, is nope. pretty cool. Just hanging out with friends, which is like. Just as just as fun as working on something, yeah. Like just being able to hang out and yeah, it was a ton of fun. Yeah. So I don't know if there's much else to say other than uh, yeah. 
Yeah, just uh, come back, dude. We miss you already. Yeah, <laughs> and your lovely fun. wife. She was so. It was so. I've heard so much about her, and like again, I'm not gonna get personal with it, but she she's very supportive and she's lovely, and and they're just a lovely couple. I'm get. I could gush about them all day, yeah. but you know, I uh, love you guys. Come back. Um, and for what it's worth, they're they're both in the documentary, or I mean, mm-hmm. the cut isn't doesn't exist, but we interviewed them each together, and it's a fun dynamic for sure. Yeah. Um. But yeah. Anything new in your world? Not a whole lot. Um, I guess work stuff right now. Finishing up a scorn rap. Mm. That's been fun to work on. Just getting super dark and depressing with the lyrics, which is easy to <laughs> easy for me to do. Yeah. And I know our fans love that. Uh, definitely drew from some dark themes of like my struggles with addiction and stuff for this song. Uh, so that's always fun. Uh, drawing from personal experience into music, that's always great. So I've been having fun with it. Still have no idea what's going on in that game, um, but it is getting close to Halloween. So watching that gameplay has been fun. Been watching the new Mike Flanagan show. Oh, yeah. We are big fans of Mike Flanagan's. And we love we, Mike Flanagan's. He means himself. I've well, never seen, like, I haven't seen one of you them. You haven't seen any of them? No. Oh, dude, we've got to do a watch party this weekend. One sure. of my brothers here. We uh, gotta watch yeah. some Mike Flanagan's. Dude, uh, Hill House, Haunting of Hill House, Bly Manor, Midnight All Mass. All I know is Raul Coley's in them, and then one of them is like, I think the first one has like ghosts just casually in shots. Yes, sometimes. dude. That's all it's I know about so any sca- of those. And it won't be called to attention, so you might just see like in the, you know, in the in the fabric behind you see a face, and it's just standing there. But you might you might think, is that a face? But if you think to yourself, is that a face? It probably is. Oh, I'm getting goosebumps thinking about yeah. it. But uh, yeah, so just I guess for me, just getting in the spooky vibe overall and then oh have started the beat for the modern warfare 2 oh, remaster yeah. which i think i mentioned which i'm very excited it should for. be would be it out or close to out yeah by the time this is out scorn yeah. is for 100 percent out by the time you're listening to this yes. go check that out listen to scorn um but yeah um, I, I just wrapped up that video sweet that was a I, I i pretty much used everything available to put it together but it, I, i'm pretty happy with how it turned out yeah, it's the gameplay. I'm excited to see the video, but I'd imagine it was challenging at times because there's nothing. The game is a seems like a very slow burn. Maybe some big cinematic stuff happens to the yeah. end, but it seems like a very like you're meant to just look at the landscape and admire the artwork. Which again, if if you guys haven't seen anything for Gor- Scorn, check it out. Yeah, uh, it's not it's not my style per se or at all, <laughs> but it yeah, is, what, it is cool looking like. The stuff within the trailer and the marketing footage was cool enough to like make something from. Mm-hmm. But I did record it to play it, and it's and it looked good. It felt good. It was like there's a good game there, but I was like, game design wise and like mechanically, this isn't for me. Gotcha. And I, I like Alien a lot in that style mm-hmm. and like the what um, what's his name? H H R Giger. Yeah, but the the film director. Oh, Ridley Scott. What Ridley Scott did with that stuff in his yeah. in his universe, but. I don't know. It, it was. I don't know. <laughs> no, that sounds that sounds that measures up to what the reviews were. Because uh, well, I this isn't this is this is my bias and not being into it. Yeah, like, there's people no, who are into it who go in, like yeah. yourself or, or any of our pretty much every. I'm in the minority there. I know that. So yeah. it's like. It, it, I, I understand that something really cool is there. Yeah. Well, a lot of the reviews kind of knock the gameplay a little bit, um, but it is, yeah. I think, the main the main aspect of the game is the look, is it's the to, world. to live in it. Yeah. Like, it, it is probably meant to be slow gameplay. It's probably meant to be kind of retread because you're just in it. It's kind of like a walking kind of art piece or more yeah. or less, you know? Yeah, for sure. Because it looked like all the levels, like it didn't look like there was a whole lot of recycled stuff. It yeah. looked like pretty dynamic. Also, it kind of relates to something we were talking about with Fable. We were talking about uh, just like the artistic struggle and having your vision 100% yeah, yeah. come true. And like Fable also often produces, like Wrights produces all of his own music. So it's like, it's 100% him. Um, we were just talking about that, like having a hand in every aspect of your art. Uh, which r- relates to Scorn. Not that there's anything wrong with outsourcing different things, but Scorn was a very specific vision entirely from one guy, yeah. um, which I really love. And I think you can feel that and see see in the artwork and the style of mm-hmm. the game. And it's it was six just, year development cycle too. Yeah. So I, like, which in today's world of gaming is is nice that they let the, that a game was finished, you know, mm-hmm. and, and came out finished, and, yeah. it, and it was polished yeah. from what I played. Cool. That's exactly what I wanted from it. Yeah. So I'm excited to actually watch the rest. I've just been watching like in clips, like the cinematics uh, gameplay, like yeah. what the story aspect. Um, hope I get a few questions answered. The rap obviously doesn't have any spoilers in it, but I want to find out 
more about the game's story, but I feel like it might I might not get the answers I'm looking really? for, but we'll see. It, did you finish it? Did no, you? I okay. I honestly just played when you were watching me. Gotcha. Because I was like, I don't. I'm gonna see if I can get away with the footage from the trailers and the cinematics because I was I was I wasn't vibing. But it was also kind of like we've had like crazy back to back weeks and stuff like yeah. people visiting and stuff. So I was like, ah, it's gonna allocate my energy <laughs> to we, not playing this game. We've got two friends coming tomorrow too. Yeah, we've, we just we've had, had a friend a busy, leave yesterday. Yeah, and like weddings and dr- f- driving up and down the coast. It's yeah, it's been a it's been a hoot. And I busy. again. I think I mentioned this last week. It's all fun stuff, but it, energy does get drained. Yeah. Um, and I was even oh. like, I don't know if we could do the podcast. Today. I'm like fucking dead. <laughs> but we're here. You're so, doing it. Yeah. He's doing it just for you, yep. Jim. Um, Jim? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Jim's watching. There's a Jim out there. There's a Jim out there. You could um, say Jack, and that covers John and Jack. That's and true. And I think, is Jack a nickname for Jim, too? I don't think so. I think it's just John. No, James is a nickname for Jim. Yeah. Or Jim's a- Jim's uh, a new- Jimothy. There's a lot yeah. of weird J- Nickname stretches that I don't really understand. Because um, yeah. my name's John, J O H N, four letters, one syllable, but I could also be called Jack as a nickname. It's so weird. Why? I don't know why. I don't know why Jack it's not was like, derivative of John. Yeah, and it's not like Jack like exists in a bubble. Like it comes from Jackson, like a real name. So I don't, I don't know. Explain that one to me. That's a weird nickname. I never understood. Tell us all you Johns and Jacks out there. Yes. Um, yeah, um, not too too much else going on. Just crazy October, looking to get out of October yep. and having fun with it. But I don't know, having fun with the. I'm really really looking forward to Modern Warfare 2 as a gamer mm. and for this and as a like general nostalgia and then just to work on it. That's going to be a lot of fun. Yes, and I know pe- people love like obviously we have the indie kind of fan that core that whatever they came from those games mm-hmm. and then we have that kind of like dark triple A fan base with Doom and Fallout and and whatever um even that even that um that one song with the the Cthulhu song with the detectives and whatever oh, like yes. randomly so, like I think there's there's something there and I think that's where Scorn hopefully will fall yeah but with all that said there's also a Call of Duty fan base yeah no and for sure and, and people love those and they come out for those so yeah. it'll be fun to to do that our Call of Duty fans I know talking to fans over the years a big favorite is uh the Call of Duty War, World War Two rap boots, boots on, on the ground, the ground. that think, that's yeah. a favorite that I've heard from even though it's not the most popular one I think uh, it might be oh it might be my oh because yeah. I just I talking to fans like that's a huge one um and I know we also have we, it's interesting talking about like our fans and listeners we have like different sects of fans yeah. like it, like the ones you're talking about the ones that are into the more like dark demon stuff like doom even like halo and stuff then we have obviously cuphead fnaf yeah. undertale and then the we also have like the nostalgia fans yeah. too the the few fans that have been with us since the beginning you guys are gonna love this one uh because i'm re- essentially recreating the instrumental from the modern warfare 2 rap which yeah, is just a, a classic da, 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 dun, dun, dun. but it also has that bum 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 it's like yeah. i'm good at writing fanfare shit i should be writing war fanfare i mean that's essentially what i do yeah. with call of duty raps well, it's um, um, it's fun to. That's one of the fun things of having done it for so long is that like motifs can be built in and yes. like, these echoes and it's like, and I guess this is a good um, transition, but it's like, I don't know. It's it's like we almost make or like music's made in this nerdcore space almost as if it's in a cinematic universe. Or you can choose to do that, which I think JT Music has chosen to do. I like with, that the JT the JT Music musical universe, which is a thing, yeah, because yeah. we have the the mob raps, and then we have we bring back motifs and stuff yeah. in games and songs from similar series, um, and that's something really cool. And it's something like, you know, maybe if you're trying to be an artist and whatever, you do well, you wouldn't. You would always you would kind of maybe not be, derive your own work so much. Yeah, and so there was. I guess that's my loose transition and segue into there was some drama a few weeks ago Ooh. in the community, and I'll be vague because the point isn't what was going on with the person, but it was it's a thing that's come up throughout the whole time. Mm-hmm. Is that essentially nerdcore is a cash grab and attaching things to properties is a cash grab? Um, which in our two episodes ago, I kind of touched like, you know, if you're going to apply a property to your song. You know, you gotta own that. I think so. Like, mm-hmm. I'm actually kind of in, in the middle there. Like, I'm not saying it's a ca- I'm not saying it's a cash grab, but I think um, 
there's a lack of owning that fact that like the mm-hmm. property associated is a huge deal in the success. Yes. And even for JT music stuff, despite 15 years of following and like a track record, the fact that Modern Warfare 2 is attached to this song yeah. is a huge thing, you know? Oh. And you can't deny that. 100%. So like the whole notion of, oh, is, is Nerdcore just like a cash grab, yeah. essentially? That's a great topic of discussion. Yeah. That is a great, because certainly the people who think that we're not really going to change their mind. Um, but I mean, my initial reaction is, of course, Nerdcore could be a cash grab, just like anything, anything yeah. else. Just like anything else. Like, I, I, and this is where it comes down to the whole therapeutic idea of you can only worry about yourself and not others. Because what other people think, y- you can't change that. Yeah. So, like, I know for me as a musician in the Nerdcore space, I take my music very seriously. I, I take my art and my craft very seriously. Does that mean I'd haven't had times where we made a song just because it was something popular. Of course, we've done that many times. We've got to, that's part of like the great part of our division of labor is like separating the art from the business, but like understanding that if you want things to perform well, sometimes, hey, let this really popular games out, let's cover that. Doesn't mean that we still don't take the craft seriously, but I certainly see how, especially some songs, even songs that we've made, people would listen to and be like, oh, that was just a cash grab. Like, hey, well, that the, happens sometimes. It is a job, you know, yeah. and I think we're fortunate enough to have kind of this behemoth of a channel and back catalog and, and kind of that track record. Mm-hmm. But, you know, where we we have we are now more, like, are, we have to for sure like things now. We Like, we, have, we are way past the point of doing a thing because it's big. Yeah. You know, and so there's that, but also... I lost my train of thought. <laughs> well, no, that's that's important. Uh, but it's also, it's still pretty easy because we tend to be into the things that happen to be big. Yeah. In, in gaming specifically, we tend to be into those things. Um, yeah, like like a recent one that performed really well was Cult of the Lamb, which yeah. was your idea to cover that game. Like, I think you just knew, oh, Christian's going to like this. You know, that the edgy atheist part of me likes to talk <laughs> yeah. about, like, oh, let's let's make fun of religion let's with this culty fun song. into scorn, too, of course. Of course, yeah, yeah, a lot of, like, religion, I've been forsaken. You guys know I love to get melodramatic with it and talk about God's forsaken me and all that stuff because, you know, it's... It's fun to explore those dark moments. Some of you like so. it too, evidently. Yeah. yeah. Um, but no, that was a case in point of like, you knew this game's popular, people like it. Yeah. You also knew, oh, this is similar to other games we've done in the past. And Christian's probably going to have fun with it, which I did. I had so much fun writing that song. Um, but yeah, absolutely, oh, we've got to like balance. Say. Oh, what were you going to say? Well, like, it, it is also a job. So there is that balancing of it, even if mm-hmm. it is like, even if we're looking at, I'm going to do thing because it's big. That's why I'm doing it, or I'm doing thing because it's big, and I also have an interest in it. Yeah. It's whatever. It's still a job, um, and so you know you can be smart about that. However you go about it, but in the end, of the day, it's like, like if my goal is to make something that also that satisfies me, satisfies my audience, can it, like get traction and all that, and then like feed my family. Like, yeah, like fuck me. Am, am I so evil? You know, <laughs> yeah. like I think the best part, and this was before um, sponsorships were super. Like at this point, whenever something gets a sponsorship, it's like, hell yeah, get the bag, you know? Yeah. But like there was a time when sponsored videos were different. And I remember Needs Gaming had one and one of the guys said, oh, yeah, fuck me, I'm a piece of shit. I want to feed my daughter tonight. And it's like, like I think that's, that's also a real element too. It's like, yeah, I'm gonna, like you know what? We, like this is our chosen career in a sense that we've been lucky to kind of go down and pursue. And there mm. are some things with that, you know? And if there's some artist developing and who isn't getting traction, but is seeing peers getting traction. And maybe it's like, I don't like, I don't know what someone could be doing, but maybe it's just not clicking. Maybe yeah. they aren't leaning into the nerd core or the anime, you know, and that's why it's not going off, but someone else is, and maybe they're not as talented, but they're, they're, you know, they're playing to an audience better. They're playing to the algorithm. They're playing to just, they're having more fun with it. You know, they're not, you know, just trying to like be an artist, you know, like yeah. I think there's a lot of pressure of craft and this is a, a kind of a, heavily involved but also third party kind of view as the kind of non-musician but also i'm very heavily involved in this stuff yeah you know that's this that's i I can see that crippling a lot of people is like this notion of like artists and the respect of that you know and there's even an element of it with like performances you know and people like i'm not going to perform backtracks it's like 
who the fuck like i'm not gonna be more or less impressed with you because you can perform without a backtrack yeah. all i care of like it, like in the end it's is it entertaining yeah you know dude, and that's that, and, the, and the and the fans will weed themselves out you know or like yeah, not okay. weed themselves out but like uh what's the word the fans will come to it if it's good mm-hmm. you know there is an element of that like yes the property helps get their attention but they'll stay and that channel will grow if that person is worth it you know mm-hmm. And that's, yeah. that's what it comes down to. And, and ultimately, yes, there are some people who, who are like making awesome music and it just goes unnoticed. And that's just a sad reality of things. Yeah. But that's, I don't know. It gets, dude, it's, we, it's a tough thing, but I don't think taking it out on others, um, and belittling what others are doing is the move. Cause mm. from what I see and know of the community, 98 of them are doing it because they love making music. Mm hmm. And the rest are, ca- are cash grabs. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I, everybody that we are friends with and associate with in the in the community in the nerdcore space, I know all of that. That's why we click with them so yeah. well because these are other people doing their craft and they're very passionate about it. I don't know anybody in our space who is doing it strictly for a cash grab. Um, it's also like but living on the the Twitterverse. You know, is a whole different world than getting out there and I meeting and hanging out there. with people. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and like. We never engage with that stuff, yeah. and we're v- like we're very rarely privy to what's going on. Mm-hmm. You know, like the deep, like some we just sometimes when we are interested, like one of the other guys in the group, like in the scene, will kind of like catch us up on what's going on. And every time it's like, are you fucking serious? This All is so this, dumb. Yeah, and it's Dude. like, and we're yeah, it's just it's just wild. Um, it's like ultimately life's too short. You can't control others, mm. and you know, and and you you can't get bitter. I don't, it, it's just like a weird thing, I guess, and it's an emotional ro- roller coaster. I get it, but yeah, no, it is, and it's it's so easy to get bitter if your channel isn't performing well and other people's are. But you you kind of touched on it that it's not just about the artist skill or the technical skill as a musician. It's so many fa- on YouTube. It's so many factors. Yeah. It's about the type of content you're making. Like th- there's so many factors and even factors that we don't know. Everybody's always joking about the algorithm. Yeah. There's, and we've been saying for years, there's so many people in our space who I, I laud as way more talented than me musically, but just haven't gained traction either by not covering the right stuff or we I know like a lot of what the traction we've gained over the years has been riding the coattails of video games to a degree like obviously we've had all the hard work to back it and everything and I do obviously I've got some yeah. some modicum of musical talent or we wouldn't be here but, but it's so it's, it, it's also been our existence and like, yeah there's never been a any false notion of using it as a vehicle of a music career outside of nerdcore I think yeah like it's always this is always, at least with minor saying this has always been what it's supposed to be. Yeah, I guess so. It's helped with that clarity on 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 looking at kind of see how other channels grow themselves or why people come into it. You know, when we first came into it, people, all our peers were doing it because they wanted to be creative and they always like sharing their videos with their friends. Mm-hmm. Like that's what it was way back when. And then, you know, it kind of changed over time when it became viable and people were seeing other people could do it. You know, and and there was people who had a lot of musical talent who decided I'm gonna lo- put these things together because that's proven, and and you know, and, and then they do that and they they're successful, and then and then you know later on the fact that content creation is so mainstream now, it's like people go in to make money or they go in you know with that goal that they have the skills, they have the things, and, and it pays off a lot of the time. Yeah, but I think that accessibility also can cause a lot of frustration when it doesn't work out. You know, it's like what's wrong? Why is this ha- happening? Yeah, like. Whose fault is it? Yeah, and then or it's easy wired, to lash like screw out. screw them. You know, it's mm-hmm. like, and and it's tough, and it's like there's no overnight success, and even if there's a grind to it, and you're grinding and you're grinding and you're grinding, and there's still no payoff. That's like, unfortunately, that's the thing. Like grinding doesn't equal success. Grinding just equals a multiplier of potential success. Yes. And what and what it does do though is it builds your skill. Yeah. Like, dude, I tell people all the time, like. The gr- my grinding years as a music producer didn't feel like work because it, it was so intrinsically rewarding for me to make a beat like that. That's kind of I because I've been in therapy so much lately. All I can say is like, you've just got to worry about yourself. I know that's hard to say when it's frustrating when you're working so hard and maybe your channel or your music isn't gaining traction, but you still just have to look inward and try to find that intrinsic 
reward of making content, not not to do it for the paycheck. You know, if you're thinking like that, well, why ain't why am I not? Why am I not? I think your mindset might you might be in your mind might be in the wrong place. Um, and again, speaking as somebody who the grindy years for me weren't about the paycheck. It was about my intrinsic getting joy out of making a new beat. Yeah. Um, but that's that's hard to like say to somebody do it because it's intrinsically valuable. I guess I'm not telling people to do that. I'm just saying from it can my be an experience. element in it. Like yeah, you can still like put in the work with the goal of making a living. But you could like you're you're training I, at the least know. Yeah, that you're training that like there is there is something being built, yeah, you know, and that can be applied elsewhere. Like maybe your brand, your 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 band, your brand, both things aren't. Maybe it's you know whatever. If it doesn't work, you have a skill set you can apply, and yeah. you can be industrious and you know and figure out ways to monetize that. You know, like 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 making it and supporting your life and your loved ones you know, can be attained different ways and it can be attained different ways with the work that you've already put in and the mm -hmm. skills you've gained. So there's, there's something there. Um, but it's, I don't know. I think, I think, I think the crux of this conversation has just kind of become like monetizing this and like the frustration of how you can or can't do it. Mm -hmm. And like the, like the, how, why like going into it, that as a goal can be tough and like setting expectations and stuff, you know, it, it, like I think we're bouncing around. I think it's all good, but like, I don't know. I, I, this, this whole discussion brings up, I remember years ago, like when we were really first started to blow up, like 2016 or 2017, I remember part of me being a little nervous, like thinking, what if iDubs did a content cop on Nerdcore? That like, look at these guys making cringy video game raps just for, just for a paycheck. I remember thinking that, because even at the time, even though I like have always taken music very seriously, there were times where I would think, huh, my heart wasn't really in this one, or like, I hope nobody perceives this as just to make money. Um, but I remember having that fear, like, I wonder if iDubs would look at what we're doing and think we're only doing it, which of course I don't think he would. I honestly think if, at the, he doesn't really make content cops anymore, but I think if yeah. we had, he would understand that like, oh, there is like passion in this. Yeah, um, oh, I think it's but visible. I just remember thinking that way back in the day, I just, it, it was funny like, but I, I also remember comforting myself that like, even if somebody did say, oh, you're just doing it for money, I, I know I'm not. And that's all that matters. Yeah. I know I'm not. Uh, well, obviously, part of like it's my job now, so of course I want to have a paycheck. But intrinsically, I I mean this a thousand percent. Like I care way more about like the intrinsic growth as an artist than I do about money. The money yeah. is just like a nice bonus. Exactly. Um, and I think so. I think the audience, the audience's sniff test is always really good. Yeah, it's been and on so, YouTube. Like, they'll they'll pick it out. You know, and the only things that don't pass the sniff test are. are our children yeah. you know and so it's a cash grab if you're like taking advantage of properties that children are going to love you know and, and, and that stuff's super shallow and pr like manufactured like yeah i would argue that that is for sure a cash grab mm -hmm. you know like if you're only making like and this like there's like if you're only just making like things that you know kids will watch and you're not putting effort and love into it then yes that's a cash grab yeah. and i don't i can't think of anything that exists like that but i know it's out there but also it doesn't gain traction because there's nothing behind it. And even if it gets views, they're hollow views from like four year olds who the parents gave them an iPad. You exactly. Know? So even those people who are cash grabbing, what's wrong with that? What's yeah. wrong? They're and getting it, a bag. That's it. Yeah. And, uh, and if they are, and, but like, again, and it, they're the, it's just going to be a different kind of success. And it's not the success that, you know, you may, maybe want, may or may not want, but either way, like, again, that's not like anyone actually in this scene is not doing that. Yeah. And any, like, so like, it's just like I understand the notion of like using properties to get your music out there or your music's getting the traction because of the property attached to it. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm. But also we're like 20, 25 years, probably uh, we're 20 years if you count all the way to front line, early 2000s, 20 years plus of this being a thing. And so there's a community. There's literally millions of people who like this thing, you know, so it's not like it's exploiting something new. Like this is now delivering a product a, some, a song, whatever, to people that want it. There's people expecting this. So it's different now mm -hmm. where, yes, it's exploitive of other properties, but it's also like it's its own thing now. It's it's its own living, breathing thing, and there's people out there that want it. So it's, mm -hmm. you know, I, 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 I guess anything. It can be a cash grab. Anything can be a cash grab. 
you know, we you, you can make really cheap things and then sell them for high, high price when the price is right, when the trend and the fad is here, you know, and then, like, but those things burn out. Like they're like a star, or like a like a really bright star. They burn out fast. Yeah, exactly. If you see someone, someone doing cash grabby stuff and you think it's shitty content, it, odds are a lot of other people do too and people will grow out of that. Like, yeah, I mean, how many, <laughs> it's easier to put this with gaming channels yeah, and no shade to those, but like gaming channels that latched on to like, to like mobile games, to like, like I don't know, Fortnite. Yeah, you know, Fortnite can still can like still lift some people up, but like especially with the presentation when it's like, hey guys, like yeah. you know. <laughs> so it's and Minecraft even like which had its resurgence, but yeah. like it, it's. Uh, but again, no knocks to those people. No you knocks get to those people, and that's you that's get in the bag. Yeah, and those people in most cases, like you have to love that thing to do it that much. Uh, oh yeah. Like we've sure. done gaming we, channels, and we love games and those games, but it's like fuck. It's still tough. I don't want to do this. Yeah. A lot, and uh, obviously it's an allocation of like this is the thing that's doing better. This is more fun than music, mm -hmm. but. Um, Dude, I and g going off that, I say all the time, like when we did Five Nights at Freddy's songs, we. In the beginning, yeah, we've kind of joked about, oh, another Five Nights at Freddy's song. But, but like in the beginning, like the first, really, uh, pretty much all the songs we made for Five Nights at Freddy's, we were passionate. It wasn't just a cash grab. Sure, it was popular, so we were like, oh, we should cover this. But once we like started doing like a research. a piece of plastic came off of my water bottle. What? Yeah, it's like a little piece of plastic. Dude, we got we to gotta stop buying those. Sue Origin. Um, um, sorry, I just want to give context why I just took something out of my mouth. <laughs> Just plastic falling off your bottle. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we were passionate about it. Um, still loved it, but certainly, I don't I don't remember what I was going to say. Sorry. Going off <laughs> that. No, it's all good. Just eating plastic over here. I know. Um, was it no, I, I think, got all the microplastics and huge plastics. Yeah. Which this big. Um, um, yeah, the crux we're trying to get to is, uh, God, it's just- It's not a it's cash grab. Just focus on be, your- Which is anything in life. And, yeah. And I think there's also, there's also like the grind does not entitle you either. Mm. You know, and I think that's there's a lot of pent up frustration, and the when that comment is shared, I think that's where it's coming from, mm -hmm. um, which is which is sad. I mean, yeah. it's not because it, you know it should You're like hard work, no matter what, should pay off. I feel, but it that's just and in this particular world of of numbers and audiences, you know, it's it's not that's just it's just not a one to one. You know, that's yeah. the way it is. But uh, I mean, again, going off something you just said. Uh, all that hard work, like there were so many beats that I've worked on in college and stuff and still beats that I work on that might not ever see the light of day. Even the projects that have come out and seen the light of day and perform terribly, uh, all of those projects counted towards the, the musician that I am today. Same for you as a content creator, all those projects. So I guess that's my, my optimistic advice to anyone who is struggling to like get their work out there just due to, I mean, we already touched on this, just due to the nature of you making it, working on whatever your craft is, you're going to get better. It's not, there's only such thing as menial ideas, not menial work. Indeed. I so if you got, like people, oh man, I like, when I was in my outpatient program, I might've talked about this. Uh, I was in an outpatient program after I got out of rehab. There were a lot of younger guys in this yeah, program. For what it's worth. Yeah, and what they, what they, of course, they wanted to talk to me about what I do for a living, but so many of these guys, love them, just had ideas, just had ideas, what they wanted to do, what they wanted to sound like. They weren't doing it. And I tried to impress upon them, look, when I was in college, do my Gary V spiel here. I wasn't out partying. I was in my room working on beats. I was doing the fucking thing. I was working on the fuck Gary V. Sorry. Um, but no, for real. I like I still had fun in college. I still partied and stuff, but I was doing the craft i wasn't yeah. just talking about oh i want to sound like young young buddy or whatever the fuck yeah, people are listening to i'm so old bad bunny <laughs> bad young, bunny young buddy young but i don't know <laughs> young gravy and young bunny do a collaboration uh, um yeah i think but, i had a similar thing like one of my sweet mates from college hit me up he's like hey man i'm really good at fifa um you know if i get these things like i don't know just like i think i'm really good i could uh, like can you give me like some tips and i like i was like all right and I listed all like all the equipment at the at a bare minimum too. I wasn't like, oh yeah, get this really nice. I was like giving the bare minimum like kind of equipment and then like the work and like all the different stuff. His response was like, oh, that sounds like a lot of work. And I was like, yeah. And like, it's like you knew like you knew this would I don't know. I just felt like the ultimate disrespect to what I did too. It's like oh, you yeah. just assumed that like 
this was easy money. I don't know. Yes, people. I, I had that with my other roommates too, where they were just like, "You're just playing video games in your room." Even my ex-wife, you're just playing. Like it's like, how, how, like whatever. That makes some sense. Well, they were my roommates though, but yeah, but like, so, they're still pretty close. But I'm like, my ex-wife, like, how did you fucking not like? Why was like? Why was that not? Why couldn't you get past that? You saw yeah. me work every day. Yeah. But anyways, there's a lot of weird disrespect in that. And that's a separate thing. But, yeah. Some people. Um, some people. Don't. The real point is. Yes, it's a lot of work, and not all people don't have the ideas, and they don't put the work in. Yeah, no, I and I, I get like I get that vibe from people a lot, especially younger people. The like, yeah. oh, you're doing it, that means I can do it too. And I know that a lot of people don't mean it disrespectfully, but it certainly, and I don't take it disrespectfully all yeah. the time, but sometimes it certainly is. It's just like. Oh, you're doing that? That means I can do it too. It's like when comedians get asked, you know, my friends say I'm really funny. How do I get started in comedy? <laughs> it's like, if you're asking that, you already missed the mark. You should just be doing it because you yeah. love it. I also, I love telling people that like, yeah, my 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 grindy years when I, when most of my growth as a music producer, like initial growth happened didn't feel like grinding all the time. Sure, sometimes it did, especially when we went full time, but like most of the time it didn't feel like it because I was just loving it. So if you it, you know, if you want to get into that grind mindset, it's going to be hard to do if you don't love it. Um Yeah. So, yeah, I, think, I don't one know. of our most common questions from fans and audiences fans and I don't, I don't know why I phrase it like that. Like one of the most common things we get reached out to from people is tips. Mm -hmm. you know be it music making or how to be you just across the board and it's there's always a look for a secret sauce or like what are you guys doing like what it, what is it that you did that got you there and it's like mm -hmm. there's nothing there's no there's no there's no secret sauce Dude, if we knew the secret sauce we'd keep doing the secret sauce and we probably wouldn't tell people yeah we would we would yeah. we would share with people we wouldn't keep that a yeah. secret but yeah if we knew the secret sauce yeah and there the, is and the response every <laughs> single time is you know you download the software and you make the music. Yeah. Uh, that's the best thing we can, you know, the real tip that we do deliver is if you're starting off, do it because you love it. Do it because you're curious. Yep. But don't do it to make money. Don't do it to become ses successful. You know, Dude. that that's the advice. Stay curious. Yep. Ted Lasso. Yep. Ted Lasso. This guy's been trying to get me to watch Ted Lasso for so long. And in my therapy session last week, the end of my session, I had a great session just talking about life and stuff. And my therapist was like, have you seen Ted Lasso? And I was like, I just cracked up. I was Validated. like, John's going to be so happy. But yeah. he showed it. This, this also connects to what we're talking about. This great scene where Ted Lasso basically shows up this guy in a game of darts and the whole, the whole theme behind it is when people say, stay judgmental they don't experience as much growth or don't experience the world as good as as well as if you stay curious fuck i, I don't want to quote the whole thing because i don't want to be that guy but the whole point being stay curious instead of worrying about what other people are doing even if they're blowing you out of the water with the, your their content or you're struggling like stay curious Stay and worry about yourself. Worry about that intrinsic value that you're getting out of your music or getting out of your craft. And if you're not getting it, try something else. Try yeah. something new. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I think I there's know. another flip side of that grinding and grinding and grinding. But it's like, take a step back and like, are you just spinning your tires at a certain point? Yeah, you know. And then you can pivot. You can still do the same thing. But like. I think that's a huge thing is is reevaluation of whatever you're doing, your goals. Like, that's just a life thing, mm -hmm. you know? And so, you know, if the grind is not giving you anything after years and years, mix it up, you know? Yeah, mix uh, it up. But that sucks, and, But I, I think, and like, we're, uh, like this, the, the the goal here was to have an abstract conversation about his nerdcore cash grab, but we're kind of open lettering to the catalyst of this, this drama, yeah. which we'll keep vague, but I'm just trying, like, the, the conversation kind of stirred that way and it might sound weird so that's kind of what's happening <laughs> yeah there was there was yeah as we said some drama but i think a lot of this stuff can be be applied to a lot of different situations yeah in and outside of nerdcore um but i think another thing on nerdcore cash grab was the kind of and it's interesting this was more from the fans than the those creators you know period it was from the fans was like shitting on the youtube nerdcore scene mm. as like using the like youtube and video games and stuff like unfair like i don't know like there was a there was a time and again it was nerdcore fans it wasn't these guys but it was like fans of like the ogs like yeah. mc front a lot mega ran like those guys who would lash out at us yeah 
you know, especially when like Mutiny MPC was starting off a few years ago and stuff like that and like bringing us down, like not being real nerd core and stuff like this. And I want to read it again. It was the fans, like these like random, like diehard OG nerd core fans are just yeah. bringing down the YouTube side and like essentially calling it a cash grab. And I was like, yeah, that's more just a thing of like, hey, like, what do you like? We're over here just doing our thing. Yeah. No, no, that's. It, I don't really know how to expand on that conversation, but that's just the real, that's another side of that kind of yeah, no, s- s- thing too. I don't and know. And sadly, there's nothing we can do to change those people's minds. But uh, for, for me, especially where I'm at now, just ha- feeling good about myself and my, I, it really, it doesn't bother me. Yeah. I've said this a lot, but it like if to, someone wants like... to look at the music that I'm making and say it's not nerdcore, fine, I don't care. I don't care. You can call it what you want. You can call it shitty rap. You can call it alternative. You can call it poop, poop, poopy fart, fart. I don't care. I just think nerdcore was the best term that describes what we yeah. do. But it's at the end of the day, be a dude. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, where am I going with this? I just pulled the Michael Scott. It's better Sometimes than this. I just start a sentence and I don't know where it's yeah. going. That's but a lot of this. There was something there. Um, yeah, I guess it, it, it's just that it was just more of a. I don't know how much we could discuss. It was like an interesting thing that happened that isn't yeah. quite the same as what we opened up with, but is kind of similar. And, and it, I, but it's like it's not the creators themselves, so I don't know where that angst is coming from. Yeah, it's like it's more like, and that it's just weird. Like, well, it's frustrating because I wanted to offer that, like to anybody who's making content and is struggling to make it be seen. That's so it sucks. It's frustrating. It's easy to want to be um judgmental or or uh you know lash out at other people yeah frustrated it sucks if you're if you know you're working hard like i know that when when i work on a song really hard and it doesn't perform as well i try not to let that invalidate my work whether it's the song or a video or a live action video if it doesn't perform well it it can be so hard not to let that invalidate the work that went into it i it, it sucks um but the only advice I have is keep trying and try something different if it's not working. But I, I yeah. d- we know how much that sucks, even though we have obviously experienced success. We know how much it sucks when you work really hard. We had a lot of that in the machinima days when we would put something yeah. on machinima. We had a lot of success on machinima at first, but then in those middle years, we had tons of projects that didn't perform well. Not only that didn't perform well, that got hate. Um, that, you yeah, know, and we had uh, to start from zero almost in yeah. a sense, you know, five years four or five years into this thing so yeah we did um, um but uh i mean obviously in our case we got in early yeah no you know, and that's another that, thing that nothing else is us. different than our peers yep. it's just we we got in a little bit early which helped yeah oh, which yeah. also means we've done it longer so mm-hmm. there's you know that, that kind of compounds but yeah i don't know it's a it's a wild thing yeah it's it's it's, it's interesting i don't know it, yeah. i hope i think i think we were delicate enough and don't I mean I think I think hope, hopefully that like this was followable and like understandable and again I think this applies to anyone not to anyone but like it wasn't so specific to a thing and it could be applied to a lot of different things outside of nerdcore in life yeah um, um but yeah yeah other in a light more lighthearted note I got a something we can jump into what is that what um that? and I've is that know. thunder or construction probably probably construction yeah. vibrating the building Let me see if I can find it. Here we go. All right, so this is something I've been feeling for a while, and someone just put into words, and it's not like, it's not crazy drama, but it's like skill, This that's Noah J456, said skill-based matchmaking sucks in Call of Duty. All I want is 70 plus kills a game against dads who get to work, to get to, this is sarcastic, and let me start over. Skill-based matchmaking sucks in Call of Duty. All I want is just to drop 70 plus kills a game against dads who get one hour a week to game, 10 year olds who trick their grandma into buying them COD, and people playing on six inch small TVs. Is that too much to ask for? And it's like, that's something I feel, it's sarcastic. It's saying match, skill-based matchmaking needs to be a thing. Yes. And I almost so far to go, like go as so far to say, like if you play more than five or 10 hours a week, you should just be in your own fucking slot. Cause like, I don't know. I'm pretty good at games and I play games a long time, but I don't want to just jump in and get slapped by some kid who's been playing since 8 a.m. that morning while I was like working and living my life, doing errands, like hanging out with people. And I'm not trying to shame like gaming hardcore. I'm not. But like 
It's just not fair. That's so that's, fra- that's not that, a fair I, experience. I haven't playing. I haven't been playing that much really online competitive stuff until we got back into Overwatch again a little bit recently. But like, it still isn't a thing. Skill based matchmaking. I mean, it? it is. So, I, but it's it's more so like there are people bitching that it exists, and the people that are bitching that it exists are those chads who are getting 70 plus kills oh, against dads who play one hour And he was sarcastically, like, yeah. oh, gotcha. Okay, I get it now. I'm yeah. such an idiot. Uh, yes, okay, yeah. But, yeah and, and I think I think it really came to a head with the battle royales, and I don't, I'm don't. i sure there might be skill-based matchmaking, or maybe it's just 100 people thrown. I don't know how it fucking works, yeah. but I think that's where it really shines is that, because <laughs> it's just like, or even just the, and I think that's why they're putting bots in some of the, MM, uh, in, in some of the battle royales is because it's just like, if you want to, because like, there's also battle royale as a long game format too. Yeah. So it's like you could do play for half an hour, nothing happens, and it's like, well, fuck that. And it's like, I don't know. I, th- that to me was just there's a lot of conversation around it, and I think it's not really an argument. It's like a it's a mega minority <laughs> who are voicing against it, but it's also like you guys are the ones that are annoying and ruining. Anno- this. Yeah, because like there's nothing more frustrating. I feel like I've been turned away from games that like Call of Duty multiplayers that were otherwise because f- those games are always so polished, amazing yeah. gameplay. But I just as as a pretty casual gamer, I know, crucify me. I get I get in one match and I'm just getting ruthlessly spanked. Like I get so much joy out of getting one kill. Yeah. Um. Or which even... I, I I understand there's a learning curve with the game, but when it's to the point, like the few times I've experienced it, where it's just like the, the, you're playing against people who you just literally have no chance against. It's like what's what's the point of yeah. this? What's... I mean, I don't, maybe there's a there's a way to do it where someone who's been on their fifth hour of gaming straight, I don't know, maybe play them against other people who've been gaming for five hours. Because, like, there's also, like, warming up, you know, maybe that's an element, or, like, that's the, like, compromise there is, like, warmed-up players are playing against warmed-up players, cold players are playing against cold players. You know, I think that's fair. So Um, these are, like, Smurfs that are... It's such a vocal minority, like, Smurf... Because, dude, if Smurfs... If that's still a term. That was a term back in the day. No, it still is. It's still a term? Okay, Smurfs are, like... what? uh, Hey. They're people who... Who are really good? You start new accounts. So they play in so, lower ranked lobbies, so they can just fuck people up. Hey, how? Like, okay, I get, it, I get if you've smurfed before just for fun because it's yeah. fun to kick ass. But if you're like, if that's what you're looking for, ah, uh, that's sad. Yeah. Well, then the, the I just want to kick ass. And then the yeah, Everybody I think I think kick ass. I think the uh, devil's advocates like, or not even I don't know, it's like because it's a shitty point, but it's like. I'll just get good. You don't have the competitive fire. You don't want to, like, don't play if you don't want to put the time. It's like, you know, I, but some people can't. And some people don't want to. Some people like, have jobs. And I can be competitive, but I don't, like, need to put five fucking hours into something a day to just yeah. be that competitive. Like, like to me, that is so dumb. And that's a huge hole in the gaming market. Or a huge, not, it's not even like a speed bump. I don't know what it is. Mm-hmm. It's just frustrating that it exists. You know, and I, it's just a disparity, I guess, in, in, in gamer gamer demographic types you know like persona types of 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 consumers it's just like it's frustrating and i think uh, i don't know i think that's why that maybe my fallout in online gaming has come in i don't know i like i like i played a bunch of modern warfare had fun was putting a few hours in a night was just playing that game having fun and besides that and then some battlefield um but battlefield is like so high number where there's a parody there. And that's a whole other thing is people trying to make Battlefield into a skill-based game. And to me, Battlefield is not a skill-based game. It's just mm-hmm. like, it's just the fucking war simulator at, a, at an arcade level. Like, you just want to be a grunt, roll in, you know? Like, if you're playing, um, if you're playing Battlefield to get sick highlights, I think you're playing the wrong game. Um you're actually, I, I just realized like what you're saying on a grander scale. Cause yeah, Battlefield is more about like the overall strategy and stuff. It's not as much yeah, like, like Call sp- of Duty it's, where it's a war, yeah. it's an arcade war, war sim, you know. Where, Damn, that just made me appreciate Battlefield so much more thinking about it like that. Yeah. 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 Like I don't, yeah. like I don't know. There's a lot of like level cap. He always posts these things about like the skill gap and like the skill ceiling or whatever. Yeah. And like to me, it's like, I don't care. I, I like, I, I just want to feel like a, like a, like a, soldier in a big battle and play my part and that's cool to me yeah and i think that's where the market is for that battlefield game but it's just interesting then you have these like total chads who play the game all day and they're like bashing the game that it like isn't this like tuned piece of 
like just finely tuned piece of game that doesn't hit their like they're like the one percent you know yeah it's not the flashy arcadey thing yeah. that that Call of Duty is and I love like, and I love to jump into Battlefield and get kills and and I and I do like Thug Life Glass is coming down but it's like I don't <laughs> to me it's just I it's me like flanking and like doing like fun maneuvers and teamwork and like like I don't know just strategy and like that kind of sense of of warfare I guess in a in a simulated gaming sense but. I don't know. And then with Call of Duty, um, I, I, oh, I, was, I got distracted myself with a tangent. But then, like, the only other thing I ever played was Overwatch. And I think Overwatch is almost like a sport in terms of how the the roles play. And it's like a team game. Yeah. And so, you know, like, the skill gap. And I think Overwatch has really good team-based matchmaking and does stratify a decent amount. Sometimes you'll get a Genji Chad that just ruins it. Yeah. But and Overwatch is, is pretty good in terms of, um, skill based matchmaking. Yep. And balancing. It's yeah. and and like I've seen this happen so many times where we're playing with our buddies who are better than me and we'll say like, especially early on, like, oh, switch to this character, it'll help us out. And me switching to that character would help, even if I'm not good with them, just by filling that role. Yeah, it's like such a there's rock, a lot paper, of good, scissors. Yeah, yeah. In, which in which too. makes it adds another layer layer of balancing there, which is super fun. I think um, um like like high skill based high skill chads in like a game like Call of Duty is also as, as it's such a competitive game like I get why it makes more sense there to be finely tuned and skill based but it's also like we got kill streaks we got quick TTK like three dudes can come at you in the hallway and you can just turn and just like hold down the trigger and you'll house them down yeah you know but in Halo three dudes turn the corner that needs skill yeah and so a game like Halo like like these arena those arena games make sense to have that high skill based gameplay Mm -hmm. um, and that makes sense to make those things competitive. And like, obviously, a really good Call of Duty player makes a big difference. We weren't, were once playing um, Call of Duty with it was like you, me, and Fable, and someone else, and we were getting housed. And then uh, Nick Fable's one of his friends, who was like a legit pro gamer, like wins tournaments, like wins crazy money, just joined. In like five minutes, he had fifty kills, and we won. And it's just it's like, insane. holy shit. Like that exists. It's cr it's crazy, crazy. But he ruined the experience for them. Yeah. And I played Apex with him, and it was me and Fable and him, and we were running around, and he would run to the comp the fight, kill everyone, and I would just have gotten there. And I was like, all right, that's fun. And then we ran to the next city or the next hot spot, and then he killed them all by the time I got there. And I was like, this is stupid. That's like taking away the game. And it would be more fun to just keep playing, but keep getting killed over and over, but actually be getting into a gunfight. Yeah. Dude, that's like. I, I wanted to segue into this somehow. The funniest thing that we've ever encountered is somebody cheating in oh, Pavlov yeah. VR. I didn't realize that like cheaters are obnoxious in any game, but I didn't realize just how stupid it was until you pointed it out. To cheat in Pavlov, to cheat in VR. The point of VR, the fun of VR is to, you're aiming yourself. You're it's the, the be, it's the like kind of experience it in like virtual you reality. You feel like you're actually holding the gun. So if you're cheating in VR, you you're taking you're just ruining the fun for yourself. So like it's so stupid. Yeah, I and mean, that's a whole separate thing with cheaters. Uh, yeah, but I, I just, think the bottom it, line is JT gaming. Get good at gaming, you stupid boomers. Yeah, that was more it's so like, thinking that like people who would get piggybacked by like yeah. fables friend but still be having fun it's like are you though are well, you having that's fun? a different layer because it's like the other team's not having fun because they're getting killed yeah your teammates don't give a shit because it's not competitive mm. and you're maybe ruining the experiencing by like poaching all the kills before they can get them and then you you're not even experiencing vr why the fuck are you here freaking chad just get out of here also was chuckling a minute ago that chad is just a term now yeah like a chad yep. it's i love that um well, see, like, that's why Tarkov is a cool version of Chad's, not cool version of Chad's, but, like, if there's a Chad, yeah, like, they're, they're likely going to run train. I don't know if that's an okay term. They're going to likely <laughs> destroy. I mean, but it, they it, are, if they do lose, they lose everything. They lose all their loot. They lose their cool guns, Yeah, which is cool. Obviously, they're probably super rich in game, and they can rebuy that stuff super fast, but that, that's kind of cool. Um, and that's part of, that's part of those games. Like, that's in it. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I think anyone... Obviously, cheats is a like fuck you, and then anyone who is complaining about not being of a skill based matchmaking, so they can't just go in and ruin people who played for an hour that night, like sad. What, what are you doing? In a, a in my best Donald Trump, sad. <laughs> There's yeah, like what are you doing? What are you doing? But but I don't know. 
This might be one of our shortest episodes. I felt like we said a lot. We did. We covered some some uh, content creation drama yeah. stuff. The frustrations of, of an abstract creating. conversation. Tur- conversation. God, conversation turned into a lo- uh, not a love letter. God, I can't speak. Turned into an open letter, and then we just raged about how we're not good at video games anymore. Yep. Um, so you have it all here in this episode. I mean, do you have any final thoughts or anything else to get off your chest? Not really. Just uh, I don't know. I just I I I feel so much for people who are struggling to make content, especially people who like have a real talent. Um, keep focusing on your talent. Uh, whatever it is, that's the other thing about the more you create, you'll figure out what your strengths are as a content creator, as a musician, and find those strengths and work on them. Just like with with me, I think my greatest strengths are making beats and catchy hooks. And I've found that over the years. Yeah. Um, and y- you'll find that. Just keep doing it because we know how frustrating that is when you're trying to, you know, I just, the people who, even though those people can lash out sometimes, I just want to give them a hug, dude, because it, it sucks when you're working hard, especially when you're talented and you can't get eyes on it, can't get traction. It sucks. But yeah. keep doing it. So. Yeah, keep doing it. Reinvent it. Um, yep. You know, maybe step back and ask the why. Why am I doing this? Yes. Um, Mm-hmm. You know, and in the end, you know, it, it's not it's not what others are doing. It's not how others are helping you or not. It's not on the any like, and also you can't control those things. It's like, you know, and this is just a, this is general life advice I think from from two people who uh, yeah. who needed to reflect and learn some things too. You know, and, and yeah. So it's not like this isn't hollow. This isn't a uh, disingenuous. It's like it's also stuff that can be applied to a lot of things. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, don't worry about other people. Just worry about you. Indeed. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Well, I, w- I wanted to hit an hour on the on the thing, but we're not. I'm not going to force it if we can't. So thank you, everyone, for hanging out uh, for episode n- Nerf. 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 Look um, forward to the uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare Two wrap. Yep. Hope um, you enjoyed Scorn. Call of yep. Duty might have been out, come out. Might be in conjunction. I don't know. And then um, maybe yep. no, maybe I don't know by then. But NPC will be announced. Um, I guess some vague stuff about that is we've we're we've, we're confirming all the artists and we will um, add who we can. Um, on top of that, we have a weird situation where we had like five artists who didn't perform that we are gonna see if they want to perform this year, and yeah. so it's gonna seem like we didn't add new artists, but we did. So it's like it's we're gonna. But anyways, we're figuring out artists. We're announcing the venue soon. Tickets will go pre-sale which will be sent out to people who went last year and then they'll go to the public soon. Mm-hmm. Tickets will be for sale this year. Um, so we're getting them out fast because um, it's a it's a big show. Yep, and we, we want to sell. Pr- doubling the size. Tripling. Over, triple, Tripling yeah, that's size. right. Gee, So it's Christ. gonna be awesome. And yeah, anyways, yeah. thank you all for hanging out and listening and we'll see you next week. Sounds good. Bye.